to meet you. Very nice to Danielle. meet you too, Steve Ferris. Very I'm nice so to meet excited. you, Danielle. I watched your panel yesterday. It was oh, so, fantastic. It was so I have watched good. some of the uh, stuff on your channel. It was very cool. I have uh, like a thousand uh, YouTube related questions for you because this is like, I'm very, it's something I'm fascinated with. So I would love to. Uh, well, that. Post interview. Let me just process of. all of that information. <laughs> um, hey guys, I'm already recording, so we are. Oh, we're hello. here. Hi, Hi, everybody, out in YouTube. This hello, is YouTube. Stephen Barris. He is the vice president of media technology and production operations, correct? For HBO. That is exactly is that right? right. Yes. Nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it. Now. Okay, you've done all sorts of cool stuff. Like your resume is insanely impressive. You've been in the industry for like 10 years, but it all started at Full Sail. It did, yeah. I mean, well, I worked in, in live theater uh, first um, and worked through some production uh, work there, both on set and, and in post-production. And while well, doing work with Apple and Final Cut Pro and, and some of that sort of stuff, I, I kind of was compelled, if you will, to... Uh, you know, sort of get into the creation side of the business. So okay, not just so you started as like a stage actor. Yeah, uh, not actor. Oh, no. okay. All right. <laughs> no, I was just a stage okay. stage carpenter. Me no, it was a bad, oh, that's so you know, bad acting. Um, no lack of bad acting, but. I um, yeah, I sort of felt compelled to get into uh, the sort of creation side of the business, yeah. and so you know, to me that meant well, you know. I feel like I need to get a, a a more spherical view of the industry, a more 360 degree sense of what it means to make a film, to yeah. make a television show. And one of the amazing things about Full Sail and something that really drew me to this place, I mean, you've walked around the canvas. It's it amazing. is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it was only a few buildings when I was here, yeah. but still, I think there's this sort of sense of this being not just state of the art because obviously there's every piece of gear like i, I have no yeah, idea what this I thing it looks is like it flies planes, but it's called it? the raven what like does it's this like not do? i don't know don't touch it yeah i don't, don't know it. but it looks amazing right and so yeah. like the campus is full of this kind of yeah. stuff and so you can't help but be like wow i mean i'm, I'm a bit of a gear junkie so i i love that stuff but also you just meet the people you you listen to gary jones the president speak you listen to you know any anyone here and they they speak with such a, a passion and i think that at, at first i was sort of like i can't this is this is probably this feels like I like I'm gonna buy some timeshare like what is going on here you know like are they gonna try to sell me something would you like to buy this room sir? you know exactly yeah it's like and you can you know so, so for one month a year you can use it for everyone but you know it, it the more time you spend here especially if you go here you meet the people it's it's for real. Like oh, they yeah. are as passionate about this stuff. Super smart too. And, and ultra smart. Oh my God. And really good. And tons of people. I, I was at a dinner last night uh, with uh, with Bruce Sweeten, who is a mixer who mixed for Michael Jackson and Quincy Jones, and he, oh, he no mixed the Thriller album. And he couldn't say enough great things about Full Sail, yeah. not because they had all the best gear. And actually, he had the best quote I think I've ever heard. He said, "You know, people don't leave the record store humming the equipment." That stuff doesn't matter. It's about the music, right? It's, it's about wrong. the art, yeah, right? It's a great and so quote. I think it's amazing because it, it sort of speaks to this place. You look at it on its surface, and it's all of this amazing equipment. And then you go a little bit deeper, and it's all this amazing people. And then you look at the the work that it comes out of its students, and it encompasses, you know, I mean, Leslie has 18 Grammys. I mean, there's like, there's so much accomplishment out of this uh, place. It, it really is awe-inspiring. And you keep waiting for like the other shoe to drop. Like, when is this all going to sort of be like, ah, yes, but they're all some crazy religious cult or something. Oh, but like, like the Stepford wives. It, exactly, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, when do they all turn back it's into West robots? Kind of exactly, yeah, exactly. Their faces split open. Like, you really kind of wait for that. And it never happens. And it just never happens. Yeah. And then, you know, you if more people accomplish more things and better people come back here and it's and it's, it's amazing it's bigger and it's bigger and it's reaching more people with the absolutely. internet and stuff it's absolutely. crazy it really is so as a full sale grad who's obviously gone really really far in your career and done sure. a lot of impressive things um, if someone was looking to go to Full Sail, what types of advice would you give them? Well, I, I, I mean, I think come here and understand what this school is about. Um, I mean, I think that in many ways it isn't a traditional university, no. and that is important. Yeah. Um, I think it is for people who are uh, a little bit more motivated about what they want to do and have a little bit better sense of it, at least the kind of industry. Yeah. It, you know, this isn't necessarily the university to come and find yourself, and I think that is something that, that everyone here will say. This is full of people who uh, are very motivated to yeah. do, who are very motivated to collaborate, who have a sense of, of what it is that they at least think they want to do, but absolutely have a sense of what they're passionate about. 
I can, I mean, not that this is about me, but I can totally attest that because I have this, my rig is not great. Like I, I the first thing rig. I said yeah. to, to the girl that was walking around with me is I was like, I'm so embarrassed. Like I do this for a living and yes. like everybody's walking around with these crazy cameras and I have like this little Sony A5100. Yeah. Three separate people have come up to me and been like, oh my gosh, what are you using? How are you rigging that together? <laughs> this is so cool. This is... And it's like, oh my gosh, you you speak my language. Like, exactly. I, I it's so cool that like there's people that are so passionate that they need to go out of their way to go be like, your camera's cool. How Absolutely. are you doing that? Absolutely. And, and it's something that you don't see. I mean, you don't see that everywhere. People aren't humming the equipment. You know, no. like that's the thing. It's it's not about that. It's about content, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think that you know that's one thing that you know we at HBO obviously take extraordinarily seriously is that you know it it is about content and oh, it absolutely. is about like what. You know, not just what the project is about, but how does it look? How does it sound? How does it feel? Does it does it speak a strong, you know, visual language? Yeah. Does it does it you know evoke the right emotional response? But also, like, does it look like we want it yeah. to do? Does it fit in with the rest of of our aesthetic? And yes, technology empowers that. Yeah. Um, but I I don't think it defines that. Yeah. You know. So you brought up HBO. What a great turning point. So great. you have worked on Silicon Valley. You've worked on Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, sure. which is one of my favorites. It's a great um, And of course, Game of Thrones is yes. the big one. Yes. Are there any like standout, fa I mean, I know Game of Thrones is probably one that people always are asking you about, but even outside of HBO stuff, are there any like standout favorite things you've worked on or anything that you've worked on that you've taken away, like a really important mm -hmm. lesson mm -hmm. that applies going forward in your career? You know, I think I, I'll say this, that, you know, I don't necessarily have a favorite, meaning that I think every show, and it sounds cliched, but every show is sort of my favorite for a different yeah. reason. I think there is those moments, uh, you know, in every production where, you know, you say, oh, this is, you know, this is really great. This, you know, um, you know, certainly working with the folks at Sesame Street and, and, and producing that show. I you know, didn't know show you worked on Sesame like, Street. I'm such a Jim Henson fan girl. Like, at yeah. low key, I would yeah. love to work on Sesame Street. It I is. Uh, it is. I mean, they are. They are I'm probably here. some of the. Yeah, exactly. Plug one. Send Ben an email. Um, it is. You know, they are probably some of, if not the nicest people I've ever met. They are so genuinely, you know, sort of not just a part of their art form, but it's like their art form is a, sort of a part of them. Yeah. You know, and I mean the work that they do as well. I mean, you know, children's entertainment is a very special thing, but the the sort of children's entertainment that has been around in its 47th season has oh, been a absolutely. part of everyone's life uh, and, and you know it's so wholesome too like there's so yeah. much on tv now that's kind of for kids that's loud and yeah. kind of aggressive and yeah. very like which yeah. is fine there's a time and place sure. for everything but i yeah. think there's always that stuff like you know sesame street mr rogers neighborhood yeah sherry yeah. lewis did a yeah. show like absolutely. all of that kind of stuff is just kind of a lost art form we don't see nearly as much of that emerging these days so. well it's smart too i think and that's it's easy to do the loud flashy animation with you know but it's it's harder to do something that's smart it's harder to do something that isn't just entertaining but educational it isn't just educational but it's inspiring and it's like that's really hard yeah. and, and i mean they've been doing it at the best in the industry for sort of 40 47, 48 years, and it's amazing to be a part of that. I mean, uh, you know, um, you know, HBO is that we're obviously producing a partner with them, and it is a hundred percent the Sesame Street gang. They are the most amazing people in the world. And like I said, it's, 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 it is, it's a, it's a, it's a very special thing to, uh, to be even uh, loosely associated with that group. Very, yeah. very cool. All right. We only have a couple minutes. So I have two more questions. Okay. If okay. That's okay. Yes. Okay. The first one is, so your title is vice president of Media technology and production operations yes. of HBO, yes. and that's a lot. What does a know, what does like a typical it, right? work day? No, if anything, I've learned from HBO is that you need more titles, <laughs> not less. We could call you I'm father. Collecting of them, I'm collecting them. Yeah, exactly. collecting them. Right. So, right, what right. is like a typical work day like for yeah? Well, you? <laughs> production operations, production services, media services. I mean, largely what we do is with our partners in production, physical production, and uh, and post production as well as as creative is is we're really there to sort of solve the logistic day-to-day -day problems of a modern production. So for, for what that means, a better, a little bit better defined, is this sort of meeting of production and technology okay. where digital cameras, drone flights, on-set security, script security, watermarking, uh, secret keeping when it comes to shows like Game of Thrones, that all sort of falls in the realm of something that is 
enabled by technology. Okay. Technology is really enabling us to do a show like Game of Thrones in five different countries with 800 crew members, you know, over a very short production schedule. We can collaborate because we have these systems in place, this technology in place that lets us do like that. the keeper of the crossroads. <laughs> a little bit, that's right. <laughs> we can shoot it because we're shooting on a digital camera that doesn't need film, that doesn't need to be processed yeah. so we can get to these amazing locations. Mm -hmm. We can get the kind of point of view, the sort of perspective that we have on a show because we have ultralight cameras we can put up on cable cameras and drones and things like that yeah. and so uh, all of that to be said that at the end of the day what my team does uh, and and I approve their vacation requests but what uh, what my team does is you know day in day out solve problems in production using all kinds of amazing technology oh, that's and, cool yeah so. problem solving it's cool yeah problem so... solvers Last question, yes. do you have any words of advice for somebody who, whether they're a full sale grad or not, is really wanting to break into the industry, maybe back end of TV shows, production? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people start off as like a PA or something, sure. but like what kind of advice would you give? Well, I always say you should find something that you are passionate about. I mean, if it's making things, if it's, uh, you know, if it's photography, if it's sound, if it's makeup costume, if it's directing, if it's writing, you know, find at least an area of the industry that interests you. And then find people that do that in the industry that you sort of aspire to be. Yeah. Find, you know, find the projects that they work on yeah. and then find the people that work with them. So let's say it's Walter Murch, you know, okay. an amazing editor, uh, a great guy, absolutely wonderful person. And you love the films that he works on you know find out who are his assistants and you know what those people don't traditionally have fans they're not the kinds of people that ah, get big accolades the long con it's exactly right <laughs> figure out who they are figure out what it is that they did to get where they are and you know what a lot of those people they're on IMDB things like that reach out and you know what most people are, are pretty gracious with their time most people like to talk about what yeah, they've done absolutely. especially if they're successful most of them are pretty willing to share. And so, you know, you can sort of say, you know, cast 10 nets out there and say one or two comes back and says, yeah, I'll talk on the phone for a couple of minutes. Yeah. And maybe after a few phone conversations, someone says, you know what, I'm actually, I'm starting on this new project. I could use an assistant. I could use a PA. I could use a whatever. Yeah. And and that's an opportunity. All you need you is that crap. In, boys. You know, that's you right. And then, in the door. that's exactly right. And yeah. then drive it home. So that's, you know, that's my advice. Again, I think 50 people are going to have 50 different paths, mm -hmm. but you know, I think in general, you know, know the people that you want to be. Yeah, and if you don't know them, get to know them. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly amazing. Right. Well, thank you so much for answering my questions. I really, really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, you're an amazing public speaker, by oh, the way. Oh, no, like, no, no, no. No, amazing. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed your panel yesterday. But cool. thank you so much again. It was right. so, so nice meeting you. Thank you. Very nice to meet so, you as well. That's it, guys. Cheers. Have a great day. Bye.